course, it's no secret that with every budget, criticisms are sure to follow. And in fact, the Conservatives are saying that it's missing quite a few items that would be vital to Canada's recovery. Uh, the Conservatives did uh, put a motion forward this morning to make some changes, hopefully. And here to talk more about this is our Conservative MP, Michael Chong, MP for Wellington Halton Hills. Thanks for joining me today. Great to be with you, Melissa. Okay, so let's get started. Um, first, I mentioned the motion. Can we talk about what uh, the amendment is and what changes you hope that the government will make to this budget that um, will appease you? Well, we're calling on the government to come forward with a real economic plan to create jobs. There are hundreds of thousands of Canadians who have been thrown out of work as a result of this pandemic. And the government hasn't put in place measures that will help those people uh, restore the jobs that have been lost over the last year. But they do mention some new spending in extending recovery efforts. Now, we are in the middle of a pandemic. How can the government do both? Well, there's one thing that's missing from this budget, uh, which is the most important task at hand right now which is to deliver vaccines to the provinces so that we can reopen the economy. There will be no reopening of the economy. There will be no restoring things back to normal until we get everyone vaccinated. And the problem is the government has not been able to deliver the vaccines that provinces are desperately in need of in order to prevent the third wave of this pandemic from taking place. But in this budget, too, we also have to plan for the future, right? So you have something like the child care, uh, the universal child care that they're trying to push forward, which inadvertently would put more people in the economy. You know that many women in our in Halton, Wellington, Halton Hills have had to quit their jobs. So isn't this a, a proactive approach to, you know, re um, reinvigorating our economy? Shouldn't we be planning for that future? Well, we're, we're supportive of measures to help. Uh, increased labor force participation, particularly for women that have been hard hit during this pandemic. However, uh, I am skeptical about the Liberal government's promise for a child care system. And I'm skeptical for the fact that they have been promising this since 1993. Um, some 20, well, almost 30 years ago, uh, they've been making this commitment and they keep rolling it out. So I, am, I have a high degree of skepticism about whether or not they will deliver on this promise. The other reason why I'm skeptical is that childcare and early childhood education are a provincial responsibility. And so the government now has the tough job ahead of it in negotiating deals with 10 different provinces that have very different approaches to this various issue. As you know, Quebec has long had uh, universal childcare for five, just over $5 a day for many, many years. Uh, that government's decided to do things in a certain way. Other governments in this, other provincial governments in this country have gone down a different path. And so I'm skeptical about whether or not they will deliver on this. Uh, but in general, we're supportive of helping women get into the labor force, particularly because they've been so hard hit by the fallout from the pandemic in the last year. And I, I mean, I guess you do have some experience in terms of relationships with our provinces. You were the Minister of Intergovernmental Affairs uh, in your time in the Harper government. So, I mean, is there, uh, what can you say that uh, I guess we need to do better um, federally with our relationship with the provinces, particularly ours? Well, I think, I think when it comes to new programs like childcare, provinces have a great deal of skepticism uh, because if we take a look at what's happened with uh, federal funding for health care, at one point it was 50-50 shared cost for public health care. But as the decades went on, provinces ended up shouldering an ever-increasing portion of that cost. And so today, the federal government only funds about a third of provincial health care, um, and the provinces shoulder two-thirds of it. So they are rightfully reluctant to enter into new agreements where in future years the federal government may pull back the funding, leaving the provinces on the hook. To, to balance the books and to deliver the rest of the funding. Is there any indication that uh, your party will vote um, against this budget? I mean, if if any of the yes. parties vote against it, there will be a, a forced election. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, unless unless the government accepts our amendment, uh, we will be vote. We are not in support of the budget, and we will be voting against the budget.